There's a training going on over there, so I apologize for that. That's the court room training or whatever, but they're supposed to be done in an hour. So is that where we move the training to now? It's not downstairs in the other building anymore? So we move, no. we move that over here? Okay, we're, we're recording. It's November 30th, 2017. This is a collective bargaining session between Pasco County and the International Brother of Teamsters Local Union 79. I'm Jim Sheriff. John Furr. Barbara Nitzman for the county. Representing the union is myself, John Schultes, and I'm Glenn Washington Utilities. Doug Hack, volunteer, Local 79. Pam White, uh, Libraries. And Seatsick Utilities. Just want to give you out some new documents. We have. Jim, you want to start that way, or I have a new. This is a modified version of our PTO policy. So. Um, and the only difference between that one and the one you received in the article is that. Um, uh, is this the one that was sent out the other day? Yes, okay, it was. Somebody yeah. Sent yeah, yeah, it's gone out to the whole okay. county. So. Yeah, we got we got more done here. Yeah, I got enough for today. More, uh, uh, one more to copy that. I think you got a couple there, don't you? What's he has that? two copies. A few copies. <laughs> oh. And I know this is this is what was what went out in emails. Right. Yeah, it's the same. The only the only difference between that and what you originally received in the article, there's only probably one change, and that was the um, the accrual rates for the tiers uh, went up a little bit because I had done some I made them math error or something. I'm not even sure what happened. But anyway, uh, the I first policy was two I days. Have a question. Is this new one that you just handed us the same as what you wore for the firefighters? Yes. Okay, so basically. Yeah. Actually, the firefighters the technically have a little bit less because theirs was on the old one that I offered you. Um, and then and then also the so the 40 hour thing, I have to adjust theirs actually. I have to get back with them because they, they accepted a previous version, which their 40 hour uh, Well, that's what we had heard. They accepted it. They did accept it. And that's it, why yeah. I was asking yeah. if this well, is they, the same as theirs. It is. It is the same. Well, there, there's some changes yeah. inherent in their contract because obviously they don't work 40 hour yeah, only. They yeah. work 56. Yeah. So theirs is on a 56 hour thing. Okay. And plus, they have different SOPs that govern um, their own discipline mm -hmm. for leave violations. So that that's addressed more in their their uh, SOPs, okay. SOPs. The fire department is more stringent on discipline than we are because if you miss a day, you're missing 24 hour shift. Yeah. Day, so. But other than that, yes, it's almost almost identical. So where are you generically in response to the PTO proposal? I'm not asking you to comment on it, it's just handed out of course, but. Well, I mean, it's, it's pleased to hear, to, I'm pleased to hear there was any kind of improvement. Um, the biggest concern that was uh, conveyed to me from our members was that um, losing their accrued time was, uh, was something that they, they just weren't interested in accepting. So, um, why don't you... So you're satisfied now that's... I didn't that say that. I'm just, I'm just telling you... What well, that issue. That's not that an issue. Right. It was never an issue. That that was never in the proposal to lose any accrued time. So, it uh, so that everybody's keeping exactly what they have, what freezing. Num what numbers um, in the accrual? Can you just point them out? Um, it was in the, uh, yeah. I think the initial one said like 5.54 hours. Uh, so page three, um, the, the table that's there, mm -hmm. uh, it, it said 5.54 and I don't remember, seven maybe, and eight uh, or something like that. I don't remember what the numbers were the last time. But anyway, I upped them. Uh, because I was missing two days in the accrual. So they went from 5.54 to 6.15. It's just the difference in the accrual rate. It's only the table. The table was the only thing that changed. It was the, the previous version was based on, I think, 18 total days, and this is based on 20 total days. So the, the beginning tier is now 20 right. days instead of 18. Yeah, it wasn't, 18. 18 was a mistake. I didn't realize we had, I was thinking that we had 10 vacation days, but we actually had 12. So I had to make that adjustment, that was all. Well, that's, I mean, that runs to what the one percent was. Right. I'm losing two days. So you said there was nothing, there was nothing we had lost before. That's what I was hearing. It was, well, it was, <clears throat> there's still, it, it, the, the combination of PTO and the combination of annual leave and sick leave is never, ever going to be the total of the PTO. The PTO is always less total days, but the thing is they're all cashed out at 100% instead of 25% for sick. So it, 
in the end, it actually is better by a day and a half, if you, particularly if you're not a heavy user of. Now, if you use all of your sick days, if you're a person who earns it and burns it, I mean, then yes, you're still being impacted by probably you know three days. But um, but that we're not you know we're not going to solve that. And quite frankly, only um, 15 less than 15 10 percent of our workforce is in that situation where they use 10 days or more. Everybody else uses way less than that. So. And the purpose of the policy is, is, is twofold. One is really to, to reward people who don't use excessive sick leave because this gives you nine additional vacation days you know, that you can plan. And then of course the other, you know, the other thing is for our organization, it will cut way down on unplanned leave and, and um, have more planned leave. And that's easier obviously to plan around. Is this yeah. gonna be, we're still gonna have unplanned and planned PTO? Yep, mm -hmm. yep. planned and unplanned, yep, exactly. So a lot of the questions that were being raised, like, well, then, you know, if it's, a, if it's my time, if it's my PTO time, how can I be disciplined if I use it? Well, if you call out every Monday, you're still going to be disciplined if you yeah. call out every Monday. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's just no different than it is now. If you call out every Monday with a flat tire, you know, yeah. you're still going to be disciplined. So there's, yeah. there's no you, difference in any If of that. you put in for an approved PTO day, you approve it by your supervisor, you get all the paperwork back the following week, overtime comes up, <coughs> are you going to be penalized for years? And you like, now nah, they are in and, some and would, departments. It's, this won't change any of that okay. as far as how that goes. I mean, it's not, it doesn't impact that at all. It's just, okay. you know, this PTO or, or vacation, but it works the same. And I think to your point, what you're talking about is some departments don't like to schedule people on the weekends who have been off all week. And that's, Yeah, you know, we've had that kind of thing. Right. And that's it on that one. Um, we do have. Uh, do you want to start? Yeah, we'll hold. Yep. I'll you want to talk about? Um, oh, here's a version for you. Senior one first. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, because you guys asked me to go back and uh, have a chat with the organization last time about seniority, so I think I'll just make this overall statement, which hopefully will put this issue to bed. Um, you know, you guys have been brought, you've brought up seniority in the past, you've brought it up in the context of, oh, well, you said a long time ago, and I know it was before I was here, that, you know, if we just kept working at it, we'll eventually get seniority, we'll eventually get seniority. I did take your proposal back to the department heads. I've had conversations with the department heads, supervisors, um, the county administrator, and board members. We are not an organization which is geared on seniority. We're not going to be, we don't want to be. Um, that is not the way that Pasco County is going. We're focused on our four values now. Uh, integrity, respect, and service excellence, quality. We are becoming a performance-based or a merit-based organization, and that is the direction that Pasco County is going. I don't see that changing as long as I sit here. I don't see it changing as long as we have our current board and the current county administrator. Um, so we're not going to do any change to the seniority policy at that point because it's just not the direction that Pasco County wants to go. And so that would be our stance on seniority going forward, at least from this point uh, right now. We can change that respect or disrespect. Well, we disagree with that, obviously. But do you understand why people who have been on the job for a certain number of years and who are looking for those chances to be promoted and move up and who are working hard. And it's all so based on merit. I mean, you know, so, it, yes. Because we absolutely. say it's not, and that's the reason why we have stuck to this for so many years. Well, the, we see it every day. The problem is that you have new employees in the organization who outperform, you know, longer tenured employees. That we want to recognize. And we're going to always be an organization that recognizes good performance and merit and, right. and so and then long established policies which get ignored every time a new person comes in and, and ignores them, well, you just go by the wayside because well, that, that's exactly what's happened. Uh, in sometimes change is, is, uh, is necessary and sometimes it is not exactly And sometimes it taken. makes the department fall apart. Well, but if the senior management is going in that direction and they don't feel the same way that you do about that, then that, and that's, that really is where the breakdown is. That some of the senior managers have come in and they want to make changes and the senior 
uh, employees sometimes, according to what you're saying, are reluctant to make those changes, that, that could be the obstacle, you know? Uh, the, you know and, I, and it's not all senior employees, it's not all new employees, you know? Not all new employees are good and not all, uh, you know, tenured employees are bad. It's not what we're saying. We have excellent tenured employees and we have policies geared towards seniority at this point. If you look at the accruals and PTO, the accruals and annual leave, et cetera, um, but at this point, we're not going to do anything else based on seniority. That's just the stance of Pasco County going forward. And uh, like I said, it's going to be merit-based. And, and department heads make their uh, decisions based on, um, you know, sometimes the quality, sometimes the quantity of work. Um, and those are the things that we want to focus on going forward, uh, particularly as we start performance-based budgeting. Uh, and have really what you know is, is looking like a new culture of, of empowerment of the employees, and, and we want to reward good performance and, and be merit-based. Okay. Well, with that, do you did you were you able to give that report to John about how? Remember, we had asked for a report on how the raises were. Yep. So I don't. I have uh, what I have is I, again. There's no. I told you they wouldn't be the same. This is a list of the employees and the merit portion of their raises and the total raise, and this is all of the employees and their EDAL scores. And I'm not saying it's in the easiest format, um, but I will give you that, and you can check it out. And like I said, the raises are based on merit, but there's, there's, just, there's just one copy of each. Yeah. So. What, are, what are the differences in those ones? The, one of them is just the scores. It's all of the people and all of the scores. So it's just a listing, and then the other one is the because the first list includes all of the Teamsters, because all of the people got an eval score, but those are just a listing of all the total scores that came in our department. And then the second list is the people who have gotten increases so far. You asked for, that's what you wanted. You wanted to know what the, who got what increases. And that's a list of all the people and the increase they got. Those are just non-bargaining unit because nobody got a raise that wasn't in the bargaining unit. So obviously we are negotiating that, so, so I can't provide that to you. Yeah, that's the scores for everybody. Everybody is a score on there. And obviously you all have not negotiated for increases, so we can't give increases. Uh, but that it gives you a breakdown of, you know, you can. Okay, so you're you're clear on our position. We reject any change to the seniority article of the contract. We added one clause in there that I don't think we had an issue with, uh, which made a cross reference to um, how it's used when there's a reduction of seniority is used when there's a reduction of that course. But that additional clause gives you heart for, and then we're back to the status quo right now. I thought we had a clause. For points, you know, if there was a reduction, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's the cross reference to yeah, the article. Okay, okay. The, more, the more you were here, the more points you got for. Yeah, I think that was article 18. 18. Yeah, it was a cross reference to article 18. We didn't change it for anything. We have revised proposals on Article 9. There's a typo in it. I'm going to reprint that and hand it out to you. On Article 2 and on Article 24. So.
Number two, you've already seen before. It's just that it was in Article 42 and we moved it. So this, you, you've actually gotten this before. So it's just the same language as it was before. It's just that we said we were going to move it to Article 2. Oh, I don't and mind. Nine, you have nine? No. That's saying in Article 2, we simply moved our previous proposal from Article 42, 42 which enabled us to TA 42, moved it up into Article 2, which is still open. Oh wait, but well, we opened 42 back up again last time. Right? So oh, that's right. Yeah, so it's 42 open, is still open, but it's, open, but it's right. different because we added the rotational wheel yeah. overtime language last time, and that we gave to you. That was right. So 42 is still open, but we did indicate that we would move that to Article 2 because you all have still have that open. So we're Article 3. Whatever it was. Okay, and Article 24 uh, addresses the fact that we've now many years into bargaining with you. There's no need to identify past practices because there's been plenty of opportunity to identify what constitutes a past practice and work it into the collective bargaining agreement. So um, we want an acknowledgement that there are none that we've had. Well, if you could think of any that are not in the contract, we're prepared to negotiate them, let me put it that way. And this will uh, eliminate any disputes going forward that always refer to it, some default unknown past practice, you know, that somebody from 20 years ago recall is happening, but it's undocumented. Yeah, we're gonna we'll return with the uh, revised um, um, article line after the first break. Thank you. 